<clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I'd like to start off by saying Baraka Tehawa. Bashem Yahushai. Bashem Racha Kodash. All right. <clears throat> Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is It's All Fun and Games Until. And pretty much this was a title that came to me earlier this morning. Um, I was watching uh, the Elder Manada Zagba. Uh, live re-upload that he did I guess it was just before the summer or around summer uh, coming into summertime and I guess he um, re-uploaded it live today <clears throat> and I was watching it pretty much he was cursing Jake out and telling Jake to repent and you know preaching the word and you know going into going into it so like it for a minute Pretty much everybody was just in that La La Land, you know, dismal uh, spirit, you know, that having a good time spirit, you know, that, uh, you know, the, uh, the storm passed and uh, now it's time to get back to normal life. <clears throat> and that's the furthest thing from the truth, you know. We're coming into some hard times, and uh, this is what we should be speaking about, because the gospel contain, uh, is uh, consistent of, you know, of course, uh, Yahweh Shai dying on the cross for the nation of Israel, redeeming us back to the Father Yahweh. That's one of the main, uh, the main gospel, but also the gospel consists of prophecies and judgments and things that are coming. Meanwhile, you have individuals out there that call themselves uh, leaders that are trying to put the people back to sleep and tell them don't worry about things of that nature as far as uh, judgments of Esau. And all this stuff is there. The Lord told us to tell these nations, but don't worry about that. You know, just put that to the side. Unbelievable. Anyway, so uh, a word that came to mind. Uh, was those people were like in that relaxed, entertained type spirit. Now, when you look up the word entertain, right? The, the word entertain in Spanish is either entretener or divertir, right? So divertir is the one we're going to deal with because that's to amuse. That's where you get the word amusement, the word entertainment, you know, so on and so forth. Pretty much in that having a good time type spirit so when you look up the word divertir in English it goes back to the word divert which means cause someone or something to change course or turn from one direction to another because right now Jake is in that entertainment type spirit you know they were on lockdown you know you would think that being in the so called lockdown you know you would reflect on your life you would reflect on things that are happening, you know, you reflect on asking yourself why are these things happening, why, um, you know, why are these things going the way, on the way they're going, you know, this seems to me as people have spoken in the past of the end of the world, you know, why are these things happening, is that the case, so you would think that they would reflect on things of that nature to seek out what they could do in order to be protected in that day. You know, the scriptures say, uh, having done all to stand, or something along those lines. Um, but n instead, they're in that jovial, partying type spirit. <clears throat> That's why the name of the lesson is, it's all fun and games until. And it's going to be until that day. Now, I got only have three precepts. Uh, so whatever comes out, if, if after the th third precept, spirit has it, you know, to shut down after that, then... You know, how, whatever Yahweh Bashem El Shai wants. Uh, this is Proverbs 23 and 17. It says, Let not thine heart envy sinners, because you see sinners, they prosper in this society. It seems that the more wicked you are in this society, the more you're blessed. And the more you try to be 
righteous to the best of your ability, the more you suffer. You know, and, and it's like to a person that has, you know, a sensible mind, so to speak. And I mean that, you know, uh, like explain, I'll explain what I mean. It would seem that, you know, the way the, the reasoning of this world is, you say, well, shit, if I'm doing all this righteousness, I'm catching hell, I might as well just be wicked. You know, that would be like the average mindset. But when you understand the scriptures, you know, the closer we get to Yahweh Bashem El Shai, the more we're going to suffer because this world is under a total different vibration. And the ones that are in tune or in league with this world, let me give one precept real quick. I believe that's 1 John 4, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just bear with me one second. Make sure that this is it. Yep, 1 John 4 and 5. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. So anyone that is of this world is going to be a partaker of the benefits of this world. Because Yahweh Shai told the disciples that... <clears throat> Let me see if I can find that precept. Uh, I know it's in 1 John 16... I'm not sure the verse right here. Saint uh, Saint John 16 and 20. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament. Why? Because if you, the closer we get to the most high, the more, you know, alienated the world becomes to us. Right? It says, but the world shall rejoice. And that's what the world is doing now. And you shall be sorrowful. You know, we're still, I mean, we're kind of, we're joyful because we see things happening and going on. But we're sorrowful because we're still in this hellhole. You know, still see the condition of the world and how things are. And we know how things should be. It says, but the world shall rejoice and you shall uh, be sorrowful. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Why? Because your Yahweh Shai is going to come back. But the the bottom line is the, the man or the people of, of the nation of Israel that turn to the Lord are going to be in a sorrowful condition before the Lord comes back. Because of the oppression or the oppressive ways of this world, you know. So going back to Proverbs 20, 23, 17, let not thine heart envy sinners. Yeah, because although they're being wicked and they're prospering, there's there's gonna come a time where they're gonna have to answer for all of the things that they've done. It says, But be thou in the fear of the Lord Yahweh Bashem Al Shai all the day long. See, this is a day to day thing. So this is the point here. For surely there is an end. So there is an end to all of this stuff. What do the scriptures say? Uh, what is that? Is that um, Ecclesiastes 7? Is it? Um, let me see if I could. Yep, here we go. Beautiful. Ecclesiastes 7 and 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Why? Because at the end, there is what? A reward. An expectation. But the beginning of it is hell. But now we're coming to the very end. So we're reading here in Proverbs 23, 18. For surely there is an end. Because there's an end to all of this. We read uh, um, <clears throat> Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. It says that as all things have a beginning, they also have an end. And the end is manifest. And the ending being manifest, there's, there's signs and tokens and things of that nature shown to um, to uh, assure us, you know, and to, um, and to confirm that this is the end. And that's why there's a lot of different signs and different things that are happening. It says, for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off because the expectation of the elect shall not be cut off. You know, because in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So for surely there is an end and thine expectation shall not be cut off. So these people that are in that amusement type spirit, they're not looking for the end. They're looking to be here. They're looking to stay here. They're looking to, it says, cause someone or something to change course or turn from one's direction to another. Because what we should be doing as Israelites is uh, following to the best of our abilities the ways 
that are pleasing unto Yahweh by Shema Shai, that we may find favor in that sight and the ability and way to escape when all this judgment starts to come upon the earth. Because, as we read here, Proverbs 23, 18, for surely there is an end. Now, Job 19 and 29 says, Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringing the punishment of the sword, because the Lord is using his sword in whatever fashion it may be, whether it's pestilence, whether it's famine, whether it's, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, or uh, whatever the, the, the uh, person's judgment may be. It says, be ye afraid of the sword, because the sword is coming. You know, it's already been spoken. It says, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. And there is a judgment coming. And the judgment will be in two parts. You have the judgment of the righteous, which is the elect of the nation of Israel that will be saved. And you have the judgment of Esau, the other nations, and two-thirds two of the nation of Israel that will be destroyed. And the two-thirds of the nation of Israel that will be destroyed is here on the soils of America. All right, the one-third and two-thirds is, is, is only for America. <clears throat> the rest of the elect that are around the earth, you know, and the rest of the jakes that are around the world that get put to death, those are, th those jakes around the world that get put to death, that is not a part of the two-thirds. That, um, that only applies to here in America because it speak, speaks about in all the land, singular. So let's read this again. But, uh, Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishment of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. There is a judgment. And that's where the Lord is setting up these troops. The way they set, he, the, he's setting them up. And if you notice, as the months and years go by, these cops, become, these cops become more and more apathetic. They look at the people more and more as an enemy. Because that was the plans from the beginning. Because really, technically, the, the, the job of, of a police officer is to protect the rights of the citizens. You know, if there's any beef or skirmish or whatever happens, it's their job to keep the peace, to serve and protect. But in this society, it's the opposite. They treat the people as criminals, you know, no matter what. That's why they pull you over, blow you away, do whatever they want. And in most cases, they get, they get off. Because that is the intended purpose, to build that frustration and hatred between the citizens and the police officers so that there could be total anarchy and chaos so that can justify them bringing in the National Guard and other troops to quell the violence and to lock people up so that they can go above and beyond their, their, the, the powers that were really uh, vested upon them because they, they're, they're, they're limited to what they're supposed to do, but they don't follow their own instructions anyway. So going back here again, be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishment of the sword. And remember, the Lord said that they are the Lord's ministers, and they don't uh, uh, handle the sword in vain in so many words. It says that you may know there is a judgment, and there is a judgment coming. And if there is a judgment coming, what is the job of a prophet? The job of a prophet is to tell of these things that are coming. Not to just oh, forget about that and forget about this. Only focus on repentance. Repentance is a very big part of it, but we still have to uh, warn and speak of the judgments that are coming. Let's go to Jeremiah 28 <clears throat> and 8. It says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesy both what? Against many countries... And against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. What was that? Judgment. So why didn't, why didn't uh, the scriptures say uh, the prophets shouldn't have even worried about that? Just forget it. Just put that to the side. You know? You, the Lord is going to come against many countries. I put that to the side. The Lord is going to uh, 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 wars against great kingdoms. I put that to the side. Of evil that's coming. I put that to the side. Of the pestilence. I put that to the side. I don't even worry about that. Don't even talk about that. Just repent. That's totally retarded, man. The purpose of the prophet was to go out there, whatever the Lord revealed to them, speak the words, the ones that got themselves together of Israel would be 
All right, and then the rest will be put to death. That's why the Lord said, tell them whether they will, whether they will hear or, the, or whether they will forbear. Then they said, well, you know, they always talk about, you know, how that, you know, that if you don't do so and so, the Most High going to put you to death. Well, that's what the scriptures say. Did not the scriptures say, if you warn the wicked and he doesn't turn from his wickedness, that he's going to die? But what did the Lord say? Warn him. And if he, and you let him know that if he don't turn, he's going to die in your wickedness. So should we listen to the Most High or should we listen to them guys? I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm as, like, as uh, uh, Joshua says, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So it says, let's read that again. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. And that's what the job of the prophets, what they're supposed to do. Why? That you may know there is a judgment and there's a judgment coming. And how can people know of the judgment that's coming if you don't tell them about it? Now, the last scripture I have is Luke 17. And uh, I'm going to read some of the precepts brothers have on the common board. And uh, like I said, we'll take it from there and see uh, what, uh, what what's going to happen. Now, why did the Mosai tell Noah to prophesy? Because it said that the Mosai saw the wickedness of man that it was great upon earth, right? So he told him to prophesy. And he told him that there was going to be a rain, there was going to be a flood, you know, and the people would mock him and ridicule him. But he was warning them. Until the day when he got into the ark and the Lord shut the door and the judgment came. So was he, was he just not uh, uh, concerned about telling them that they were, they were going to get put to death if they didn't get right? If they didn't stop what they were doing? How come, how come the Lord told him, yeah, you know, I'm going to bring the flood, but look, Noah, don't worry about it. Just uh, set up the ark. Don't worry about telling the people nothing. You know, just forget about it. Don't worry how they're going to be punished. Don't worry how they're going to uh, um, be dealt with. You know, you just you just get the ark together for you and your family and the animals and don't worry. No, right here, Second Peter 2 and 5. And spared not the old world. But saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. So he was out there preaching about righteousness and about things that were bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Because he was telling them, look, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. You know, and the Lord is going to bring a flood, you know, uh, soon. And what happened? Eventually the flood came and it drowned them, them people. So Luke 17, 26. And as it was in the days of Noah or Noe, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. And when I was watching the elders' video, that live show, live stream he did earlier this year, pretty much, you know, you see that spirit in Jake. It's just all about partying and having a good time. They ain't thinking about the word of the Lord. They ain't thinking about repenting. Do what? Huh? Nah, you know, I hear you, dog, but, you know, I got, I got things I got to do, man. I got to make that money. I'm on my vacation, man. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm trying to just chill and relax, man. I ain't trying to hear all that what you're trying to say right now. You know, you got to go some, you know, go to Saint elsewhere with that. <laughs> oh Lord, people in, are in for a rude awakening. That's for sure. All right, so it says they did eat, they drank, they married. They were given in marriage. You should have seen them walking up and down the street without a care in the world. Maybe a couple of people stopped by and saluted the brother, said, you know, Shalom or whatever the case is. But for the most part, they were just out there in that party, go lucky spirit. And that's what brought the um, the title. It's all fun and games until, until what? Until the Lord brings that flood, you know, which in this case is going to be those nuclear missiles. Whereas these guys said, you ain't got no button to no missile, so you ain't you ain't gonna you ain't don't even worry about that. Yeah, but the most high is the one that's controlling everything. And he said to tell these people whether they whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. And it says what? And then shall they know that a what? That a prophet has been been among them. Why? Because the things that the prophet spoke will come to pass. But don't worry about that. I tell you, boy. The reprobateness, if that's even a word, the reprobateness of these 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 dudes from back then, 
is is uh never ceases to amaze. Just when you thought you heard it all, just when you thought you got to the bottom of the barrel, it, it goes deeper, man. So it says, I'm going to read this again. They, uh, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all, and they were warned. Yeah, okay. You, you're out of here, dog. You do a disappearing act. How, how about that? All right. <clears throat> so it says, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. So this happened during, during the time of Lot. The angels were telling him, look, get out of here because we're about to destroy this place. You know? And he was lollygagging. When you go, when you read the, the history on it, he was lollygagging. They had to actually forcibly remove him and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah because he was just lollygagging. He was playing around because he didn't want to leave. It says, um, it says, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Same thing they're doing today. Just apply these same principles in modern terms. You know, the part about building, you know, buying homes and things of that nature, planting, you know, like saving up their, you know, their nest egg and, you know, and, and uh, storing up food, whatever. They sold, they bought, that's their business. You know, whether they have their own business or they work for somebody else. You know, they drank, they did eat, you know, they party and feasting. It says, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And this is what we, we're supposed to let them know that these things are coming. Even thus shall it be in a day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, what did Yahweh Shai say, say to the people? Did he say, don't worry, I'm not going to even talk about it, I'm not even going to worry about that? When he was telling them about 70 A.D.? No, he told them exactly what happened. He said, you, when you see these things happening, when you see the abomination of desolation, stand in a place where it ought not, spoken of in the book of the prophet Daniel, flee ye to the mountain. You in a housetop, don't come down and take the stuff out of your house. And then he also told them that these be the days of vengeance. He didn't say, oh, don't worry about that, forget about it, we ain't gonna talk about that, you know, ain't no big deal. No. He told them. And those people that were there at the time, some of them were probably in their 20s, teens. Some of them were probably babies. Some of them were probably in their 40s and 50s. You know, so when the time came, which is about approximately, I uh, say about a little less than 30 years in the future from that point, you know, probably about 27, 26 years in, in the future, that's when 70 AD happened, and prior to that you had, it was 66 AD, so like 20 plus years in the future. So some of them people that were in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, some of them, the oldest ones could have probably been in their 70s, pushing up to 80. Some of them were in their 60s, 50s, you know? And they suffered, a lot of them suffered this because they didn't take heed to the words of Yahweh Shai, but he warned them anyway. See? Um... Well, it says right here, in that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his uh, stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. And that's why the Lord told him, don't look back. Because remember, Lot had great riches. And this verse here, 31st verse, is letting you know why Lot's wife looked back. She looked back because of all the goods that they had in the house. And she didn't want to leave those goodies. Because where they were going was uncertain. But they had all this that, that that Lot had accumulated over, you know, the time where he was with Abraham, you know. Boy, oh boy. Bunch of reprobates, man. Anyway. At any rate, as uh, Richie from Boston says, remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. All right, so let me see some of the precepts on the on the uh, comment board, and then we can close this out. Because uh, pretty much the point is made, you know, the, the point, point is it's all fun and games until. Until what? Until the destruction comes. And in, and in that time, that's when Jake is going to want to get serious. Let's go real quick to Amos. Is that Amos? No, that's Hosea chapter 5. 
At 15, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Yeah, when, it's, when the, all hell starts breaking loose, that's when they're going to want to seek the Lord, but it's going to be too late for a lot of them. All right, so let's see. Let's see some of these precepts brothers got on here. Um, beautiful. I was just thinking about this one, too. Um, matter of fact, wow, there's so much. But I'm going to start here with our Elder Yashawamba. The prophets speak things into existence. Our word through Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, are the button. That's right. And that's why 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8, it says that. You know, whom the Lord shall reveal with the spirit of his mouth. You know, and then shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And what is the job of a prophet to do? The job of a prophet is to go ahead and and, and uh, publish this. Make this public. You know, the same thing that uh, Habakkuk saw. What did he do? He published it so that people can read it. You know, they told her these great horrific visions that they had of the future because the Lord told them to do that. He didn't say, oh, don't worry about it. Uh... Die garments from Basra, Isaiah 55, 6 through 9. Seek ye the Lord where he may be found, and beautiful. Call ye upon him while he is near, implying that there's going to be a time when the Most High is going to withdraw himself. He's not going to be there to be called upon to come and give that swift deliverance. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. Excuse me, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's right. You know, so it don't matter what you think of how you feel, it matters of what Yahweh Bashem Al Shai uh, says. All right. <clears throat> uh, the Bar Kabash, 2nd is 16 On earth shall perish of famine. And the other that escaped the hunger shall the sword destroy. So are we supposed to tell them this? Yes or no? Yes. Let's go to um, 2 Ezra's 15. And everything is plain. But you know what? This is this is what the uh, uh, what King David said, Psalm 69. He said, let their table be made, be, become a snare. And that which have been for their welfare, let it become a trap unto them. So pretty much what's happening is this word. That these guys have learned years ago, the right breakdowns, they're losing it because they losing they lost the oil, and this word instead of being a comfort and a guidance to them and and something that will make them be wise and make wise decisions and speak with wisdom and and teach the word and bring out the judgments of the Lord, they are becoming reprobate with it. They're becoming no different than a person in the church trying to quote scriptures all out of context. You see. So it says, 2 Ezra 15 and 1, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people, what? The words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, save the Lord. So this is what the prophets do. Um, let's go real quick to Amos 3 and 8. <clears throat> it says, The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, and Oshai, power hath spoken, who can but prophesy? And what are we supposed to be prophesying? We're supposed to be prophesying the things that the Lord said. Not whatever comes to your mouth. Habakkuk 2 and 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. That's why it says... Let the Most High be true, and every man a liar. So we're supposed to speak what the scriptures say. So it says, uh, And cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Then it says, Fear not the imagination against thee, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee, that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall what? Shall die in their unfaithfulness. Yeah, they're saying that, you know, if you, if you don't do this, if you don't do that, the Most High going to kill you. That's what the Lord said. Then now he tell uh, go going back to Moses. Then he then he say, uh, choose this day life or death. But these guys are these guys are reprobates, and they're pretty much putting 
Israel back to sleep. You know? Or the white man did. And, and, and it's like they always have a problem with, with speaking up or talking or, or cursing out Esau. That's really their, their God. Their God is Esau. Even these guys that claim to be Israelites. Their God is Esau. Because every time you speak against this goddamn devil, boy, for some reason, Jake, whether they're in the world or in the truth, they have to f find some valiant way to fight for these devils. You out there, oh, then the white man, you're going, to go, and you're going into slavery. Well, that's what the scriptures say. He that leadeth cap into captivity shall go into captivity. Don't, but don't worry about that. Madness. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. And what is our job? Our job is to tell them whether they hear or whether they forbear. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Did not the Lord say he appointed four kinds? And what are we supposed to do when we, when we know about these things? Teach them. Prophesy these things. Let Jake know, look, if you don't return from your wicked ways, this is what's going to happen to you. You're going to die. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't search, you're going to be put to death. You're going to die. That's what the Lord said. It says, for wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So let's go back to the, these comments. Um, I read that. Okay, let's scroll down. Read that, read that. Um, that's a good one. Uh, John, the dark matter. John 15, 22, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sins. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, okay. Like I'm just trying to get some of the some of the juicy ones. Uh, Second Peter, Joshua, Allah, the chosen. Second Peter three ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away as a uh, with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. And what's going to cause it? The nuclear missiles. But don't worry about that. You ain't got. You ain't pushing no button on no missile. Yeah, but we're still we're the we're the um mouthpiece of the Lord on the earth to, to speak these things and that is our job to uh, to bring out this uh, bring out the information uh, tribe of Ephraim second Peter 312 looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the most high where in the heavens the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the missiles again but don't worry about that that's what them dudes man oh Lord um, second uh, die garments, uh, Daniel seven twenty seven, and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Uh, the bark of Bar, second Ezra sixteen thirty seven. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. Dark matter, uh, Ezekiel three seventeen. Therefore, hear the word in my mouth and give them warning from me. That's it. There you go, uh, brother GMS Tazakia, Second Chronicles fifteen thirteen. That whosoever would not seek the Lord power of Israel should be put to death, whether whether small or great, whether man or woman. You know, that's what the Lord said. Uh, let's see. See what else we got. Yeah, I read this one already, but let's read it again. I, was, I didn't read the seven verse. But Bar Dhamma, Amos three seven, surely the Lord power will do nothing, but He revealeth His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. 
Verse 8, the lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord power hath spoken, who can but prophesy? And that's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Yeah, and I was trying to go live earlier, but uh, matter of fact, let me read this one, and I'll let you, I'll tell y'all, brothers. Uh, you want it done? Second is a 50, for many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter days shall dwell in the world. And we're supposed to talk to them about that. Not, not, no, don't worry about that. Because they have walked in great pride. Um, yes, yeah, so I was trying to record earlier this morning. Uh, well, you know, I, I was set, you know, it was raining today, so I had set up. I, I was using the umbrella that the sister sent me. And, um, you know, I, I took it, I had set everything up. And um, as I was getting ready to get started and pull stuff out, you know, my mother called me, so I had to go take care of that. You know, that's why I didn't get a chance to do my lesson earlier. So um, it's lucky for that. But um, as I was putting the umbrella back away, there was something inside the, the sleeve, you know, that you put the umbrella in. And I didn't realize it before. Today I, I grabbed it. I thought it may, might have been the instructions. But it was actually a postcard from the sister that she sent him, sent me, like a, you know, um, like a thank you, you know. So you know, I want to say the water to that sister. I didn't even realize it till earlier today. That was the first time because I had I had the umbrella for a while, but it was the first time I actually saw the um, the uh, postcard, you know. So the water to the sister for that. Um, let's see. So you know, that was pretty much pretty much it. Um, yeah, this is a good one too, uh, JMS Australia. Uh, Luke nineteen twenty seven. but those my enemies, which are not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. So if you don't do what you're supposed to do, you're going to get put to death, man. All right? So, I mean, that's pretty much, pretty much all I got. You know, this has been 